Well, uh, just as always, nothing ever works out like it's supposed to because this was supposed to be an easy situation where we slid the bumper into those two slots. And I don't even know if those are factory slots now. It looks to me like somebody probably cut them out. But I want you to look at the angle of our bumper brackets, and we put them on both ways. And you can see they go in at an angle. Um, are these bumper brackets for this car? I don't know. It looks like somebody went out in their horse barn and took a torch or something and just bent some steel to try to make bumper brackets because I don't think these are original style bumper brackets. Uh, it's got drivers over here and it's got pass over there but uh, I think these are some homemade jerry rig situational brackets that somebody made and thought they were going to work over here on the car. yourself why don't you turn the brackets around so if I turn the brackets around because that's the first way that we did them is we turn the brackets around if I turn the brackets around then they're pointing out this way so the only other thing that we can do to this and I don't even know if this will work is we're gonna have to find the center of our bumper and then from the center of the grill right here we're going to have to measure over to this hole and measure that hole and then from this center of the bumper we'll have to heat our brackets up, bend the brackets out to fit. Is that my job? Should I do that? No comment. You shouldn't have to do that because I'm pretty sure you can buy bumper brackets. Yeah, but then on the other hand, like I said, if we look at these holes, we don't know if those are factory holes or not. We don't know. They're just square holes that are cut out and, you know, to do something. So what we'll do is we'll find the center by Minnie holding the tape measure right there. We're going to bring the bumper around. And we got a 72 and a half inch, so half a 72, which would be three feet, would be 36, that would be 36 and a quarter. So we're gonna go right here, 36 and a quarter strong. And that's the center of our bumper right there. And then I'm gonna come from the grill, and I'm gonna have to get down here because we're gonna have to eyeball this bitch. This is a situation that you have that you should have left the piece of metal long and then you could have measured from this to the piece of metal. But we went ahead and cut the brackets out already. We don't have a long enough piece of metal. So we'll go ahead and do this right here, because this is, and it looks like it's gonna be approximately 15 and a quarter. And let me turn around, there we go. And then this one is going to be 15 and a quarter. So we're looking at, it's the same on each side, 15 and a quarter. Uh, so we'll go ahead and take our bumper, and this is where it's going to get a little tricky. Um, we got to measure from this line here out to here. Let's see, this line here to here. 15 and a quarter. 
And if I look at that there, if I look straight on, uh, this is like, I don't know, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, then we'll measure 15 and a quarter here. You see how tricky this is? You see the situation we got? All right. It's not looking fucking good. So we got 15 and a quarter here. In that area there. And then this one's over here. Like that. And that doesn't even look, I guess it yeah, does. Yeah, they're about in the same spot. Are they in the same spot? Yes, okay. they are. All right, now this is where it's going to get tricky because what we got to do to get those out to where we need them is we need to heat these brackets up with our torch and pull on them. So the only way that we're going to be able to do that where it'll be tied down so we can pull on it without the whole bumper moving is we'll have to tie this bumper down to my floor. Are you listening? No. We're going to have to tie it down to the floor on my fray machine uh, chain pots, whatever you want to call them. And then once we do that, we can take the torch, heat it up, and pull those out to uh, get them to where we need. Because if we look at that right there, that's not looking too... Something's fucked up here. I don't think that's going to work. I don't think it is either. I don't think it's going to e even work because... If you look at it like this, if you set the bumper up here like this, and then you look at it, well, yeah, I guess it would. You can kind of see the line. See the line right here? Let me get a straight yeah, but, edge. But you know what? What? You're not going to just be able to just to bend them in. You're going to have to make an angle in them. I understand that. If we take the straight edge, Uh, because the bracket's going to be coming up to here. That bracket has got to come way over here. You see what I'm saying? Look, there's our line. There's the bracket. We're not worried about way out here. We're worried about up here. This has got to come way under there. All right? There's no way you're going to be able to move that bracket like, bend that bracket like that. Both of them. Without some kind of jig or something, we don't have the equipment to do I that. I got a torch. It's going to heat it up and bend it. Yeah, okay. Good luck with you that. You don't think that'll work? No. You don't think it will either. And it's going to be hours and hours okay. of work for All right, uh, what I'm going to do, okay, I'm just going to tell the owner that, you know, I'm going to weld the brackets. Let me show you the brackets I made. Okay, here's our brackets. Okay, this is our right side one. Got the two holes. This is going to go right here, like I was explaining. Okay. See what? That goes in there like that. Let me put it in there and we'll show you. Okay, so that goes in there just like that. And then he'll be able to slide his brackets in there. Okay, and then we'll give him the right hand ones. And I don't even know if I want to weld these on there. I wouldn't. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the owner of these. And this is a situation that says there's not going to be any money made in this. Um, the brackets that the owner supplied, I don't know what they are. They definitely don't go to this car. I don't know what they are. Because we put them both ways. Um, I put them both ways, and they fit like crap. They don't fit at all. Okay, they don't even fit at all. And for me to do all this extra work, it's going to take two days. And I don't think I, I'm agreeing with many of the body shop girl. This job is a dead issue, and the machine is broke down. Yeah. That's all we can do. But... We do got the brackets. You basically got the concept of what's going on here. And that is what I would do to uh, make this work if the brackets were the right brackets. Because these brackets are not right. These brackets don't go to this. There's no way. You can see where they added metal. Do you see what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. See this lip right here that's different than the original lip. And then you can see where they welded it on right here. Yeah. And that's telling me that's that why the brackets don't The brackets fit. are not the right brackets. It looks like the bumper went down in here somewhere. And we don't know what's been done to these or how modified these things are. 
So our suggestion is that this is a done deal. We're not going to do the job. I got a red blinking light. I think we should go ahead and move down the line and work on getting the car painted and out of the shop. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete, showing you that all jobs are not as easy as you want them to be, and sometimes the answer to the job is no. Am I right or wrong? You're right. All right. It's a situation that says I can't do it. Um, I'm not saying that I couldn't do it. I could do it. But the real deal is, is we don't have time and expense. The owner doesn't want to spend the money on it. I can't do it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll give him these brackets. I'll give him these brackets and then he can do what he wants. It's a done deal. It's wrapped. It's over. The machine has now quit. Goodbye. Now, my intentions on this thing were to block sand it out and paint it. We were going to go at 180 then 320. And I was going to go ahead and use my DA on most of it. But uh, if Minnie could bring the camera over here. The problem that we're having is two situations. First, the whole car is round. So using a flat DA sander on it is basically good for the doors, part of the deck lid, and maybe the running boards. Everything else, oh, and the hood up there. Everything else has to be hand sanded. But, this is what the problem is, and this is what's on the whole car I wanna show you. If we look right here, I wanna show you when I rub that off, look at all those specks. All right, that is what you call trash in the paint. All right, um, the primer dust is highlighting them. So if you look right here, you can't see them, all right, but they're there. Here's one right here. So I want to take my sanding paper, and I want to go ahead and just run it across here, and I want to show you, all right, how much trash is in this paint job. You can see all these little specks here everywhere, all right. I don't know if many can see that right in there, but come down here and look at this when I sand this. This is what the whole car, it's hard to see up there, so I'm going to... Now, the specs are going to turn black as I sand them. You can actually hear it. You can actually hear how rough the paint job is. Even right here, listen to how rough this is. You can hear how rough. It's almost like sand. Look, this is primer and this is paint. You see what I'm saying? So, I mean, there's no difference here. It's, all right, just barely a difference. So the problem that we have, and uh, I told you we were going to come back after we painted it, but I wanted to show everybody this is because when you run into this situation where the paint is just on so thick and heavy, and here's the spot right here, look, where my finger is, that's a dust speck. So I'm going to take my sanding block and see how it disappeared now, all right. So when you use a DA sander on that and you're trying to get everything, the DA sander isn't going to get all that out. The DA sander is going to rough everything up for you and you're still going to have to come back with uh, 180 to sand it down. Now, it, it's, it's like the situation was I was going to go ahead and do it with 180 first, then I was going to hit it with some 320, and then we were going to paint it. Um, when you're falling into a situation like this, you can't do it that way. You have to hand sand it all with 180 first, then you got to come back with 400 grit. So this is gonna be a double whammy paint job. Um, and this is another situation where you tell yourself, I just lost my ass. Because what actually turned out to be an easy fucking job is now turning out to be a high quality, intense custom job. And when I say lose my ass, uh, I already gave the customer a price to do it. And uh, if I have to do any work above and beyond that, uh, if it's not very extreme, because this wouldn't really be called extreme, this is just taking it one step further. Uh, it's basically on my hands, not the owner's, and because I already had a plan in my head how I was going to do it, and it didn't work out. So, I just wanted to show you that, that uh, dust specks in your paint, and this is, I mean, I, I feel sorry for the old guy that owned the car, but I'm just going to be honest with you, this paint job is really, really fucking rough. You know, and being 80 years old, he probably painted it in his driveway at home or possibly in his garage. 
and he probably did the best he could, but, uh, and I'm not cutting the old guy down or nothing, but a repaint on this car is really an extreme situation. And that's one reason we're going with flat clear. Because this paint job is so rough that if we went ahead and just repainted the car and put high gloss clear on it, it would probably look worse. Am I right or wrong? Probably. The body work isn't the best on this car. And when you're using the flat clear on it, it's going to hide a lot of the body work and it's going to make the car look 100% better. So uh, I just wanted to come back and say all that because we have a lot of sanding to do. Um, I'm not even done sanding this fender. Look at that dust speck right here. Look at this. Right there where my finger is. Watch this. You see that? Watch this. Look how big that one is. It's really got to get down to it and sand it. Look, it's not even, it's not even coming out of there. We're going to end up... Okay, there it goes. Look, it just fell out. Okay. So what you're doing is you're sanding the clear, and then when you hit the dust, look at this right here. What's that? That's a gouge. We're going to have to... That's tape or something. Yeah, there it goes. Yeah, so that's what the deal is, and you just got to watch everything you're doing. Go over every inch go over by every, inch. Every single inch, one or two times. Um... The dry sanding is going to be your main sanding. Once you get it all dry sanded, the wet sanding goes very, very quick. And, uh, yeah, this is not a good option to use 320 on. We will have to definitely 400 wet sand this to really paint it properly. So. Now that we got it wet sanded and ready for paint, Minnie the Body Shop Girl has pulled the car into the paint booth and has taped it off and it is now ready to be painted. Now the paint can that he gave us didn't have a label on it so we had to basically hand mix the paint to match it which I think came out pretty close. We're not going to look at it but I think it did, didn't you? I didn't, you see, didn't it. see it. Okay, so what I'm going to do before we put any paint on it is come on in here and let me show you real quick. Because this video set here is kind of turning out to be a little longer than expected. We were just basically going to make a video of, you know, it's not painted, it's painted. But you know my friend Pete, I got to uh, let everybody know what's going on in my world. Uh, it's all been wet sanded, then he went ahead and wiped it off, it's all taped off. And the reason we're going to put sealer on it, if you look right here, you can see the in differences in the clear. I'm afraid since we busted through the clear here and it looks like the clear's been busted through over here and then what happened here? Did you wipe that off? Oh, apparently not. Exactly. Many of the body shop girl. I forgot the running boards. Uh, right in this area right here, it looked like water splashed up here. The guy didn't take care of the problem. but So what I'm going to do to make sure that we got a nice good coat of paint and we're not going to get any blistering, we're not going to get no imperfections on it. I'm going to go ahead and just put a whole coat of epoxy primer on top of it. Now what the epoxy primer will do, it will seal all this and it will ensure that I won't have any blistering, I won't have no solvent popping, which we had back here, extreme solvent popping I might say. That whole back end was solvent popped. And what solvent pop is, it's where one chemical reacts with the other chemical and it kind of 
gives it a what dissolving type motion it where it bubbles up and it like mi microscopically uh, uh, meticulously is basically stripping the paint underneath and it's stripping it and pulling it up so that was real bad over there um, and I went around and you saw what we did we went ahead and fixed all the door dings that we found I mean you know this started out as a little collision job it's turned into a major paint job and now it's time to go ahead and paint it um, epoxy primer three full wet coats of paint three full wet coats of flats clear that means it's going to be rat rod blue it's going to be a semi gloss and then we're done with this thing let's get it painted we'll be back when it's all done and i think it's going to look pretty awesome what about you it's going to be great okay you want to do a real quick walk